Hey guys, <clears throat> today I'm going to demonstrate the automatic break feature of your dyno. This feature is very useful as it enables you to define a break curve that the RPM will follow during your run. So this way the RPM curve is exactly the same from one run to the next uh, and this improves accuracy and it's also very convenient. Your dyno can uh, support up to two breaks and if you choose that option you will get one or two of these connectors here. Um, but before we connect anything there, we need to set up the system in, in the options. So you go to options and then brake controller setup. And here you see that this dyno has an electronically controlled brake. You can click this one. And then you have to set up the PWM signal. That's the signal that uh, the, your dyno uses to control your, uh, your brake. Now you see the, so the signal period is 1 millisecond, that uh, means 1 kilohertz, and minimum pulse width is 0, max is 100, meaning the signal can go from fully on to fully off. You can see that uh, demonstrated here. So this is when a brake force is 0, this is when a brake force is 100. You can control this, you can connect uh, this output directly to your um, your eddy current brake controller for example but in this example I'm going to control an RC servo and if we do that we have to set up a 20 millisecond period it goes from minimum 4 percent to maximum 11 percent that's just how it is for these servos and again if you look here uh, you can see it moves but of course less than before so here I have connected a small RC servo directly to your dyno and as you can see, I'm actually powering it from your dyno, which you should only do for demonstration purposes. As you know, USB uh, ha doesn't have that much power, and uh, the your dyno box is, is self-powered from the, the USB line. So you will need to power your servo uh, from a separate battery, a separate 5 volt power supply. But in, for this demonstration, we just connect it directly like this. Okay, so here is the servo, and we go up to... Uh, uh, to our demonstration here and you can see it moves when I move the, the slider back and forth so that's pretty good the next thing to set up uh, that I'm not going to cover in this video I'm just going to briefly mention it is to set up the PID control loop so that's uh, the loop that uh, that controls uh, it's, it's a feedback loop basically that controls your servo you can just start by one uh, on a proportional and one in the integral uh, factor for now it's good enough okay all right so let's do a demonstration you go to run the first thing you notice you have a new meter here a brake force meter it goes from 100 from 0 to 100 percent and you also have a new button here brake curve setup so I have defined a very simple brake curve here. It holds the, holds the RPM at 3000 for a while and then it jumps up to 4000 and, uh, and uh, continues for that for another few seconds. Okay, you can add uh, points or you can do whatever you want. Uh, but now let's just do it a very simple, simple one. Okay. So in this demonstration I have, I'm using an RPM simulator so I can just by the uh, turning a, a dial here I can change the RPM up and down so remember it was going to hold the RPM at 3000 for a while and then it was going to jump to 4000 after some seconds so let's see what happens so let's start at a little bit below 3000 and then we, we increase the RPM of the engine and we see what the brake force is doing okay we go and we start so you see the brake force is zero and then we go up and it, it increases and now if you it, and it, it adjusts around 3000 like that you can hear the servo go now it's at 4000 and it continues the same way adjusts uh, adjusts around the, the, the rpm to keep it where we expect it to be now we are done and brake is off pretty cool huh